right, so let's move on to eigenfunctions and eigenvalues. If the application of operator A on a function f yields a constant times the original function, so A here is a constant, okay, then we say that this function f is an eigenfunction of operator A. Okay? And this little a, this constant that comes out, is called the eigenvalue corresponding to that eigenfunction. Okay, so for every eigenfunction, there's a corresponding number, and that number is called the eigenvalue. That's the number that comes out when you operate on the function, okay, on the eigenfunction. So let's show that e, for example, show that e to the 3x is an eigenfunction of a, and determine the eigenvalue if we define operator A this way. So operator A simply takes the derivative of the function you're applying right on. Okay? So let's see. If this is our definition of operator A, A hat operating on 3x would be equal to 1. Derivative with respect to x of, oops, this, that's not 3x, e to the 3x, right? We're doing e to the 3x. So that's the derivative of e to the 3x with respect to x. What's the derivative of e to the 3x? 3e to the 3x. Okay. So you can see this is your function f, and this is your function f, and this is your constant a. Let's call that a. So you say a equals 3. What do you call a? This is the eigenvalue that corresponds to this particular eigenfunction. And so it's, we've proven that here that when you operate a on e to the 3x, you get back a constant times the original function. So e to the 3x, we say, is an eigenfunction. Right? So is sine x an eigenfunction of operator a? Okay, what is a hat sine x? That's the derivative with respect to x of sine x. That's the derivative of sine x? Cosine x. Is that equal to a constant times sine x? Can you write cosine x equals a constant times sine x for any x? There's no constant that you can multiply with sine x with sine x to get cosine x for every possible value of x. So that's not true. So you say the answer is for this first one, no. Right? Sine x is not an eigenfunction of operator a. What about a squared? What do we mean when we do when we say a squared? Operator a squared. Okay, operating on function f, that's the same thing as a operator applied twice. Okay? So, what happens if we take a squared, operate that on sine x? That's a hat, a hat, sine x. So, this is a hat. Apply the first operator, what do you get? Second derivative with respect to x of sine x. So that gives you a hat cosine x. And what does the a operator do? Takes the derivative of cosine x in this case. What's the derivative of cosine x? Negative sine x. So you're saying then that a squared of sine x operating on sine x gives you back negative sine x. So is sine x an eigenfunction? Is that equal to a constant times sine x, the original function? Yes, right? And what's the eigenvalue? Equals negative 1. Okay, so that's what eigenfunction and eigenvalue means. So, is cosine x an eigenfunction of the parity operator? Remember your parity operator? Every time you see an x, replace it by negative x. 
question. I think that's what the eigenfunction was at the last one. The eigenfunction from the last one is negative one. So it gives you back negative sine x. The eigenfunction is sine x, I'm sorry. And the eigenvalue is negative one. Because negative sine x is just negative one times sine x. All right. Cosine x, is that an eigenfunction of the parity operator? Parity operator operating on cosine x gives you what? Every time I see an x, I replace with negative x, so that goes, gives me cosine of negative x. But cosine of negative x is just cosine x. It's an even function, right? So the answer is yes. What's the eigenvalue? Eigenvalue is plus one, right? So an even function, in fact, any even function is going to be an eigenfunction of the parity operator. If like if I do pi squared of two x squared, what would that give me? Two times negative x squared, and that will give me two x squared. So eigenvalues one. Okay. What if you have uh, an an odd function? What's an example of an odd function? Sine x is an odd function, right? That would be parity operator operating on sine x would give you sine of negative x. So what is sine of negative x? Negative sine x. So is sine x an eigenfunction? Yes. And what's the eigenvalue? In this case, the eigenvalue is negative 1. So an odd function is an, eigenval an eigenfunction with an eigenvalue of negative 1. An even function is also an eigenfunction of, an, of a parity operator with an eigenvalue of plus 1. Okay? What about... Uh, sine x plus cosine x. Is that an eigenfunction of the parity operator? That's going to give you what? Sine of negative x plus cosine of negative x. So that's negative of sine x plus cosine x. Is that an eigenfunction? No. It's not equal to a constant times the original function, sine x plus cosine x. Okay? So it's not an eigenfunction. So if you have, anytime you take combinations, this is what's called a linear combination. You have to take a linear combination uh, when you're adding these functions. Uh, if you take a linear combination of odd and even functions, they we say they're not eigenfunctions of the parity operator. So you say odd functions have definite parity. Okay, if the eigenvalue, you can say it's it's an it's got an even part. Uh, it's got, it's a it's we say symmetric if the eigenvalue is plus one. It's anti it's anti-symmetric if the eigenvalue is negative one. Okay, so even function symmetric, odd function anti-symmetric. Eigenvalue plus one if it's symmetric. Eigenvalue is negative one if it's anti-symmetric. But if it's not it's not an even or an odd function, it's a combination of both, then you'll end up with uh, you'll end up with a function that is not an eigenfunction of the parity operator. What about this one? By operating on sine x over cosine x. Is sine x over cosine x, which is really tangent x, right? Is that an eigenfunction? Yes, because this is going to be equal to negative of sine x over cosine x, right? So tangent x is an odd function. An odd function divided by an even function is still an odd function. What about sine x times cosine x? An odd function times an even function is also an odd function. This is going to be what? 
negative of sine x cosine x. Okay. What about x plus sine x? Question? Yeah, if you did, this is going to be sine of negative x times cosine of negative x, right? But cosine of negative x is just cosine x, and sine of negative x is just negative sine x. What about x plus sine x? Yes, this is an odd function plus an odd function. So if you're adding odd functions, you get an odd function. If you're adding even functions, you get an even function. It's when you add or subtract odd and even functions that you get something that no longer has a definite parity. So we say odd and even functions have definite parity. Okay. So let's talk now about degenerate eigenfunctions. What do we mean by the degenerate eigenfunctions? Well, if two eigenfunctions have the same eigenvalue, okay, then we say that they are degenerate. So here's an example, simple example here. Which of the three eigenfunctions of A are degenerate? First of all, why do we say that F1, F2, and F3 are eigenfunctions of operator A? Because when you apply the operator A on those functions, you get back a constant, right? So what is the eigenvalue corresponding to f eigenfunction F1? 2. What's the eigenvalue corresponding to eigenfunction F2? 2. Since F1 and F2 have the same eigenvalue, then we say F1 and F2 are degenerate eigenfunctions. Okay? So we say F1 and F2 are degenerate. F1 and F3 are, they're not degenerate. F2 and F3 are not degenerate. That's what we mean by degenerate eigenfunctions. They are, they are, these are eigenfunctions that have the same eigenvalue. 